And so I'm excited to be able to announce a new, a new series, a new Bible series that we're starting as of today. Um, we had a bit of a break last few weeks from a sermon series because I wanted to allow the preachers and myself to preach on things that they were passionate about. But now this is, a, this is something that I've actually been praying about for quite a few weeks. Actually, it could be, it could be, up to, it could be a couple of months that I've been praying about this particular series that we're going to be doing. And a few weeks ago, I had to think of what, what's a title for this message, for this sermon series, these few weeks long sermon series. I can't tell you how long the series is going to be. It's going to be a few weeks. And, and it hit me as I was studying the book of Galatians. I, this thought hit me as I was reading Galatians, Ephesians, and these letters of Paul. You know, I couldn't help but notice that there was a, a serious tone in, 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 Paul's, in Paul's letter to the Galatians. And, and they're pretty hard-hitting. Paul's a pretty hard-hitting preacher, a pretty hard-hitting um, pen writer. And, and, and I decided to call the series Truth Bombs, Letter to the Galatians. Because these are, Paul and ultimately the Holy Spirit, I believe, is going to be dropping some truth bombs um, from this particular book of Galatians. And they, they are, they're pretty hard-hitting, but they, you know, it's amazing when we think of a surgeon... You know, if you, if you, God forbid that anyone has a tumor and you have to have it cut out, it can be painful. The recovery can be painful, but in the end, it's a, it, it is the, the pain is for a blessing. And so sometimes truth can, can hurt a little bit, but it's always for the long term. It's always for the healing process. Um, and it's also to draw us closer to God. So it's going to be a powerful series, and I hope that you can stay um, for the next few weeks not staying here in this building, but can, can tune in over the next few weeks um, over this particular series. Today we're going to be looking at the first few verses of Galatians, the first four verses of Galatians. And the theme that came to mind as I was studying just the first four verses of Galatians was this idea of what does it mean, what happens when you enter into a relationship with Jesus. You know, so often we don't talk about some of the blessings when we enter a relationship with Jesus, but we're going to be looking at, at what happens with our life purpose when we accept Jesus in our life. We're going to be looking at, at the blessings of, having, of accepting Jesus in our life, the blessings. And then we're going to be looking at the end result of what it looks like to have Jesus in our life. So we're studying salvation, what salvation looks like in our lives. What does salva salvation mean? Let's put it out there to the, to the congregation, the church here. What does salvation mean to you? Let's put it out there. You can yell it out. I can hear you. What does salvation mean in the context of Christianity, context of the Bible? What's salvation? Freedom. Freedom. Let's get some more of these words thrown out because we're going to be learning so much about salvation, what it truly means. There's going to be some truth bombs as well. I warn you, I warn you, as we study salvation, there's going to be some real truths, that are, amazing truths that are coming out. What does salvation mean to you? Huh? What was that? Chosen. Chosen? Okay. Yep. What else? Freedom. I like that. Salvation in Christ. What does that mean to you? Forgiven. Forgiven? Awesome. Very good. Very good. I would like to put to you that salvation is also entering into a relationship with Jesus. Will we all agree to that? Salvation is coming back into a relationship with Jesus. And so what does that look like? What does that relationship look like in our lives as Christians? So we're going to be noticing the first, the first verse here. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you for this message that you have prepared for us, Lord. May it be your words as always, we pray in your name. Amen. We notice here, Paul, we're going to look at the individual purposefulness of salvation in our lives. What is your purpose? What happens to your purpose, your life purpose, when you accept Christ? 
Um, we notice here in, in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 1, it says here, Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead to the churches in Galatia. So it kind of sets a bit of a background here. So Paul is writing a letter to some churches in a place called Galatia, which today, which was part of the Roman province back in the day, one of the Roman provinces, and it's today Turkey, Galatia. Now we notice it says, Paul. Now who was Paul? When I, I, was, I was looking into this character, Paul. You know, we, we hear when we come to church the name Paul a lot because he, he did write a massive majority, a massive portion of Scripture, of, the, of our Bibles. He wrote a lot of letters. But I, I, I was interested to know a little bit more about Paul's background. They, they say that he was born somewhere between zero, so when, when Jesus was born, to 14 AD. They, they say he was born sometime between there. He was born in a place the writer of the book of Galatians, Paul, was, was born in a place called Tarsus, which is also a part of Rome, Roman province, which was also part of today modern Turkey. So, he, so Paul was from this place. He, he was, interestingly, now he was Jewish. He, he was of the Jewish nation. His parents were Jewish. But he was, the Bible says that he was actually a Roman citizen. A Roman citizen. Now that that was something to be cherished in these days. It was a real, it was a, it was a great thing. It was a, almost like a, a, a ticket to many privileges if you were a Roman citizen of the day. It was, it was an amazing privilege. Perhaps that some commentators say that he had been given Roman citizenship through his father. So his father had become a Roman citizen through something, through... He had, he had perhaps done some kind of remarkable service to the, the nation of Rome. So therefore, he became, he was gifted with a Roman citizenship and therefore that was passed down to Paul. That's what some people say. Now, you, the wonderful privilege of being a citizen of Rome is that you could, you could potentially become, a, become quite wealthy. You could do well in your tradings, in your dealings. You could become a merchant. You could, you could earn a lot of money. But he did. we know that he didn't end up down that path. He didn't end up the path of a merchant. Instead, he turned out, he decided that he was going to be called to some kind of special calling that he and his family would have thought were absolutely an amazing accomplishment in those days. So he actually turned and he decided he was going to become a rabbi. He wanted, and what does a rabbi mean? He was to be a teacher. He, he, was, to, he was to be a minister and a, and a lawyer, all in one, a rabbi. And the amazing thing about him becoming a rabbi is the Bible says that he actually, he, he trained under a legendary legendary rabbi of the day called Gamaliel. And he was legendary. He was, he was probably one of the most powerful men and religious lead or leaders of the Israel nation at this day. It was a wonderful, wonderful privilege to be able to sit at the feet of this great teacher Gamaliel and learn from him. And, you know, it's, it seemed like Paul had it all mapped out in his life, didn't it? And he's a Roman citizen. He was, he, he, he had trained under a great man. It was like, it was like, kind of like if you were a musician, you were trained under Jimi Hendrix, the legendary guitarist. You know, someone, one of these legends. He was trained. It seemed like he had it all together. He had his tent making trade ready to roll. He was set up for life. He was going to be a, he was going to earn a lot of money. He's going to be able to provide for his family. He had this great influence and this great purpose. But then all of a sudden, we notice in this verse here that, I love this, it says, Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, we know how the story goes that Jesus appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus. 
Paul had it all lined up for him. He thought he had everything. And, and to add to that, he was zealous for this mission that he was going to accomplish in eradicating all the Christians. He thought he had a noble purpose at that point in time. And then the Bible says that, that he was made an apostle, not through men, not, not from men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father. You know, friends, I can't help but think that sometimes we, we think we may have it all together in life. You know, we might have that good job. We might have been accomplishing all of those dreams in our lives. We might have are doing this, are doing that, have got that, have got this, have, are achieving this purpose, are achieving that purpose, are a part of this noble cause, you know. But is, does that mean anything in the grand scheme of things? I love it how Paul says that he counts all of that as rubbish. He's passed all of it, all those amazing achievements. He counted it all rubbish. And let me tell you something, all the achievements that, that we can, all even the noble things that we can achieve as humans here on this planet, all of the amazing things that we could do, really, in the grand scheme of things, it actually means nothing unless we have Jesus in our lives. Do you guys agree to that? All of the, all of the great accomplishments that you could possibly dream of, if, you could, if you're the man that, is, that created the rocket that, that, that went to the moon, that, that, that actually means nothing unless you have Jesus Christ. You know, that, well, even, if you can, even if you can make millions and millions, and you can, that actually means nothing. We see that Paul had everything. And, and you know what? I want to add to this. That when you enter into a relationship with Jesus, dear friends, you discover your true purpose. Do you, do you agree with that? You actually discover your true purpose in life. You discover, hey, Lord Jesus, I, I made, you've made me like this. You've, you've made me to like this. You've made me to dislike this. You've, you, you've, you've created me with this particular personality. You've created me with, with, with these certain gifts and these certain talents. And it's only when you discover Jesus and you enter into relationship that you discover, hey, this is the way that I was created. Lord Jesus, show me how, you, how I can be used in all of my capacity, in all the gifts things that you've given me, in all the talents that you've given me, and all of this, show me, Lord Jesus. And when you enter into a relationship with Jesus, He actually shows you your true purpose. Isn't that amazing, dear friends? Do you want to know your true purpose in life? You know, He's made you so unique, friends. He's made you with a unique purpose. He's made you with a unique talents. He's made you with unique resources in your life to be committed to him for the purpose and the mission of Jesus kingdom isn't that powerful friends you have amazing purpose just as Paul he thought he had this this great purpose he really did he thought he was doing something truly amazing and zealous but then all of a sudden Jesus had to break into his world and snap him out of it and say hey I am the purpose I am the true purpose follow me you are an apostle you which means you are sent of God. You are sent to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Friends, you are sent as well. You, Jesus is calling you and he's sending you, dear friends, for a mission, a mission that centers around the gospel. Do you guys agree with that? That's powerful, isn't it? Isn't that powerful, friends? Isn't that powerful? You have a purpose? Wow, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you as you discover more and more um, in your relationship with Jesus. Hey friends, I'll, I'll, notice to me, we're, it's, it's, it's so powerful that you only just look at four verses of Galatians and you're blown away, isn't it? Oh, we've got so many, many more of these, these amazing lessons. Hey, it says here in verse 3, chapter 1 of Galatians, it says, grace. Wow, that's a loaded word in and it of itself. Grace. Grace to you to you church grace to you church grace to you David grace to you Marinette Auntie Ty grace to you grace to you all grace to the church 
Paul, you know, the Holy Spirit is inspiring Paul to write this to the Galatian church, knowing full well that you here this morning would hear this message as well, friends. Grace to you, John. Grace to you, Grace. And peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. What does grace mean? Grace, what does grace mean? <laughs> we have someone here at our church called Grace. Grace means it's a gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift that you don't have to earn. Isn't that amazing? It's a free gift you don't have to earn. So, so, so Paul is saying grace to you guys. Grace to you. And when you, study, when, you, when you study this understanding of the word grace, in the New Testament especially, you'll notice that grace brings with it its gifts. It's actually gifts. Gift of salvation, grace to you. It's a gift of salvation. The gift of, of being saved. The gift, grace to you. The gift of, of, you, of you being connected with God. That's, that's a gift. These are gifts. The New Testament talks about, there's about 10 of these graces, 10 of these gifts that are given. The gift of salvation, grace to you. You don't have to work for it, you accept it. The grace of, of being able to pray to the Lord and seeing prayers answered. The grace of, of you, the grace of you being at peace, even though you're going through a trial. The grace of, of you receiving the Holy Spirit. Receiving the Holy Spirit, it's an amazing gift, a powerful gift. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that's a gift. This is grace to you. Grace to you. So you, you, peace when you're going through trials. Grace in the areas of, of, hey, of God molding your character. This is a grace. This is a gift where God wants to help you overcome some of the struggles in your character that you're facing, some of the habits that you're facing. He wants to gift you with grace to help you in your character building. He wants to gift you with the grace to help you grow closer to Jesus. And, and, and you know, I can't help but, but see that God is just such a God of grace. And you, I, I hope you may know that as well. God is a God of grace. And when He gives you, when he gives you the grace... It's amazing. The peace that he sends your way. Grace to you. Grace to you, Paul says. Grace to you, God says. Grace to you, the Holy Spirit says to you. But now, I don't know about you, but sometimes in my Christian experience, in my Christian walk, in my walk with Jesus, I sometimes, I'm like, Lord, where are these graces that you talk about? Why haven't I been experiencing these graces? Why am I going through these trials in my life? I just can't seem to see these graces of yours. I don't know, have you experienced that before? But then, as I began thinking and praying through this this week, I said, Lord, where are the graces? I'm reading about it here. And you know what the amazing thing is? You know, where is that peace, Lord, where I'm going through these, high, these, 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 these trial times in my life? Where is that, that grace, that gift of peace? You know what I felt like the Lord was saying to me this week? You haven't received it. How do you receive grace? How do you receive it? You haven't, you haven't received the gift. You haven't received the gift. Have you, have, have you received it? How do you receive the gift of grace, friends? You know, He's got the gift of salvation to give you. He's got the gift of blessing, the gift of peace to give to you. But sometimes we don't receive it don't we? We sometimes don't receive it. Now, how do you receive these gifts? How do you receive these gifts of grace? How do you receive it? Let me tell you something, friends. The way, say, if I was to give a gift to my brother David here is a Bible. He's reaching out, right? He's reaching out and, and grabbing it. How do we reach out in a spiritual sense, and take the gifts of salvation. Take the gifts of peace. Take the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Take the blessings. How do we reach out? Friends, it's the way that we can reach out spiritually, like I'm reaching out my hand physically. Spiritually, how you reach out is by faith. I think of, the apostle, of, of Peter. He was going through a storm. Now, the hardest time to receive grace is when you are going through a storm. Do you find that that's the hardest time to receive grace? That's the hardest time to receive gifts because what happens to your faith? It crumbles. You can't reach out and grab it because you're being pummeled on all sides and you just forget about faith altogether, don't you? Don't I? Don't I? Don't I all the time? 
And I, was, I, I felt like this week you know, the Lord was directing my attention to this particular verse. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Are you going through a trial, friend? Are you going through trials in your life? Count it a joy knowing that the testing of your faith Testing your faith produces, produces patience. It produces patience. So your faith is being tested, but sometimes my faith is not even tested because it's not even there. Where's your faith? Where's your faith that reaches out and grabs the gifts? But let... So the testing of your faith, you're going to be tested with these trials. You're going to be tested, but your faith has to reach out and grab the grace of God. Your faith has to just be there and say, Lord, I trust you. You can't be like Peter on the water. What happened to Peter on the water? He's walking on the water and all of a sudden, where was his faith when he was walking? He's, yeah, he's fine. Everything's good. Every, there's no storms. I'm walking on water. Wow, this is powerful. Everything is great. And then all of a sudden, what happened? Eh? The waves, the storms, every, the wind began to pick up everything. Began to, and then what happened to his faith? drop but shouldn't that be the time where his faith is strongest and so then what did he do he reached out in faith to jesus amidst that trial what happened jesus took him by the hand picked him up friends when you're going through the trials you're being tested by faith that's the hardest time to receive the gifts of grace from god but that's the time when we should be putting our trust in his gifts and, and, and just saying by faith lord i'm going through this trial lord i need your holy spirit lord this is the time where you need that faith to reach up, to grab that gift, to grab hold of that wisdom that he wants to give you, that gift of grace, the gift of wisdom that he wants. But I like this, verse 4, but let the patience have its perfect work. So what happens? Faith, hold on to it, hold on to it, hold on to it. It produces patience. So what happens you have patience? I don't know if I've got here yet, but imagine if we as a church got to this stage. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's the grace of God. That, that right there, when you're, when you're perfect, complete, and lacking nothing, it's when your faith has been tested, you've held on by faith, and the Lord has supplied you with the grace. You're lacking courage. What is about Paul says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness, my grace is sufficient for you. That's powerful, friends. What is the end result of salvation? What is the end result of having a relationship with Jesus? The end result with having a relation, relationship with Jesus. It says he, he gave himself for our sins. We know that through and through. He gave himself for our sins. He experienced judgment. He experienced separation from the Father. He experienced everlasting death. He experienced all of this. That He might deliver us. He experienced death. He gave Himself for our sins. That He might deliver us. God is a God of deliverance. And when does He deliver us, friends? He delivers us. He delivers... I almost spoke in the King James. He delivereth... He delivers us from this present evil age. Do we live in an evil age, friends? We really do, don't we? We had September 11, the anniversary of it, a few days ago, and you can still see the images in your mind, can you, of the evil age that we live in. With 2, 000, over 2,000 people died, the Twin Towers. We're living in a present evil age, highly stressed age. Heart, diseased age, sickness, sorrow, crying, relationship breakdown. We're, we're living in a society where people are getting mugged, people are getting murdered. We're living in an age that is an evil age. And aren't you looking forward to when Jesus comes again and delivers you from this present evil age? When, that, when he makes end to salvation. When finally salvation has found its end when Jesus comes. You're saved now when you accept Jesus, but we'll see the Saviour coming in the clouds one day, one day soon, I hope. This present evil age can't go on, can it? 
You know, I was, I was reading about this story. Pretty scary looking guy, doesn't he? This guy here, his name is Rene Martinez. And he, he was a gangster in the States. You know, when he was, um, when he was, he started, he was in gangsters, when he, gangs when he was in his teens, early teens. He started his own gang called the Latin Syndicate. And he was, he was, he was into drugs and he was into violence. He was getting into, he was fighting, he was stealing guns. He was seeing people killed left, right and center. He's starting gangs and he's, and he was, he was in and out of prison. He had a terrible, terrible upbringing. His mum tried to commit suicide many times. Mum was on drugs. He was on drugs. But from the 80s all the way to 2012, this was his life, in and out of prison. And he's, there's a documentary that's out on him, on his life. And it's, I, I saw part of it, and it, it's, it, it shows all these home videos of him with all these guns and getting into fights, literal, literal real fights and, and everything. And, and he just, he looks like a tough guy, doesn't he? He looks like a tough guy. And he, and he was. He was a very, very, very tough and to be feared kind of guy. All of a sudden, he, he, had, a, he had a daughter and he decided that, you know what, I want to turn, I want to try and provide for my daughter. I want to try and, and be there for her. I, I need to provide. So what did he do? He took up bare, bare knuckle boxing, backyard boxing and, and mixed martial art fighting on the world stage and, and he was winning a lot of fights and trying to earn money that way. All of a sudden he decided he's going to make a career change. He was going to turn to gangster rap, which is, he wanted to get into music and so he started recording music in his garage and, 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 and all this kind of thing. And, and all of a sudden, while he was there in his garage, a voice came to him and said, the voice said, I have called you. I, I spared you for such a time as this. You heard this voice out of nowhere. I spared you for such a time as this. And then all of a sudden, as he, as he, as he heard this voice, he, he saw flash before his eyes his life. He saw his life flash before his eyes. He saw how he nearly got killed six times. He saw that time where he was where he was in a coma and almost died. He saw that time where every week he, he had to go to a new funeral from his gangster friends who were being killed. He saw it, and, and, he, and when he heard this voice, I spared you for such a time as this, he remembered that his, that his mother had been praying for him because his mother gave his life, her life to Jesus, given her life up with drugs. And he, he got on his knees and he, he gave his life to Jesus. He repented. And it wasn't until, this is him here, he gave his life to Jesus. And he said, in quote, when I went, when he, things, he said that things completely changed the day he got baptized. And he had this to say about it. He said, when I went in the water, April 10, 2016, that day shifted my life. I ain't never been the same. Something incredible in my life happened that I can't explain. It was Jesus. Only Jesus can do it. And he gave his life around. And, and today, you know, he was heading down a, a different path, wasn't he? A completely different path. And he's doing well in MMA. He was doing well in bare knuckle fighting. And he was, you know, but then all of a sudden, Jesus, kind of like Paul, broke into his life. And now you can see him. This is him baptizing his close friend and gangster. He baptized him. And he just goes around and he goes to all the gang-ridden areas in the United States and he boldly walks through and he proclaims Jesus. He proclaims that Jesus can save. And, and it's an amazing story about this man, how his life changed around, friends, from having a relationship with Jesus. Hey, friends, we talked about Jesus wants to give you a special purpose in your life. Just as he gave this man a special purpose, he wants to give you a special purpose as well. Would you like to discover that more of that purpose that he has for your life? Maybe you're, you've already been walking down that purpose life through Jesus in the last couple of years, the last few weeks, and that's amazing. But do you want to continue to make that commitment to follow Jesus in your life? You know, we spoke a little bit about receiving the grace and gifts of Jesus in your life. Friends, it starts with receiving it through faith. 
Do you want to ask God this morning, say, Lord, gift me with faith. I struggle with it. Lord, I struggle with it. Gift me, give me faith. Do you want that, dear friends? And the third thing is, do you want to be ready when Jesus comes, where the fruition of our salvation comes, when Jesus comes in the clouds and takes us home from the present evil age? Do you want to be ready, friends, for that? Let's, let's, let's have a word of prayer. Let's commit this all to God. Let's, let's commit and say, Lord, give me faith. Lord, show me my purpose. Let's say, Lord, get me ready for when you come again. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I, Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for sharing your words, this words of truth with us this morning. Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would continue to show your purpose in your life. Lord, we ask that you gift us with faith so we can even receive the gifts of grace that you so readily wish to lavish upon us. Lord, we finally want to say, we're sick of this world, Lord. We're sick of the, the present evil age that we live in where there is high stress, where there is just problem after problem, Lord. Give us the strength in this life, but also, Lord, help us to be ready each day for when you come someday. For we pray all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. God bless. And I, I pray that you all have an awesome week in Jesus this week. Stay close to the Lord Jesus. And uh, I'm praying for you all as I hope you're praying for me and my walk with Jesus as well. God bless.